again and welcome to my latest video diary entry. Today is Saturday the 14th of April 2012 and as you can see I've arrived in Beijing. So um, that journey home that I was telling you about in my last video diary, um, it's got underway and already I've met with a huge problem. Um, the plan is to travel overland down to Nepal through Tibet. Um, but we just heard two days ago that we can't get permits for Tibet. Now, there's lots of options. Um, one option is flying. Um, the, the whole point of my trip um, is to get home and all around Asia without flying. So I really don't want to fly. That's a, got to be a last, last resort. So we've got quite a few options. We might go to a place called Chini. I might go down to Shanghai to meet Michelle and then decide what to do from there. But we want to give it time. We want to um, hang around for at least another week just to see if this permit situation improves. It's just complicated. Um, round one, just just step off on this trip and major, major hurdles. Um, just see what happens. Uh, who knows? Who knows where um, I might be speaking to you from next. So, see what happens. Why? Tiananmen Square has been closed at 7 o'clock by the police. Um, I'm the last man standing and I've been kicked out twice. Have a look. It's deserted. Seven o'clock at night, it's deserted. Yeah, I'm the last one. <laughs> Let's go before I get arrested. I'm at the Bird's Nest Stadium and uh, I've got myself locked in. The, the clean kicked out at 12 o'clock and I didn't realise it, so I'm stuck. I've been walking around all these exits trying to find a way out um, and I'm stuck here. Don't know how to get out. Found the exit, I'm out. So I'm outside the Olympic uh, swimming pool and uh, I quite fancy a swim, so I'm gonna see how much it costs to go swimming for an hour. Let's have a look. How much does it cost to go swimming? Uh, sorry. Swimming for one hour? Uh, yes, sir. Hi. Hi. Do you know where the changing rooms are? To get change for swimming? Change? Yes, yeah, swimming. Can you tell me where the changing rooms are for swimming? Uh, yes. English. Can you swim in, swim in here? No, 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 no. That's uh, the cinema. Well, these look like the changing rooms. Could be. Let's have a look. No. Toilets. So there's the pool. Brilliant. Well worth the uh, five pounds entrance fee. I think I've been ripped off. Don't you? So this is Beijing West Railway Station and I came here 11 years ago on my round the world trip and I described it as the biggest, baddest, maddest train station I'd ever seen in my life and looking at it now I'm sure that it's got bigger, badder and madder. It's just incredible. It's a monolith. So I'm going in there to see if I can change my train ticket to a different destination. It looks absolutely mental, so wish me luck. So the woman at the English speaking
speaking counters told me to get a refund and buy a new ticket. So, refund obtained and back to counter 16 for my next train ticket. I want to go to Shining. Shinyu. Uh, well, today? Tonight, yes. Uh, today only sleep, no sleeper. Pardon? Yeah. Only stay, no sleeper. No sleeper? I just gave a ticket up for a soft sleeper to Shining. Oh, sorry, no sleeper. No, I, I had a soft sleeper seat. Only her seat, no sleeper. Right, I'm not happy. Um, I've just had to give up my Lhasa train ticket, which is a two day ride on a nice, comfortable sleeper. And I decided instead to go to Shinny. Now, Shinny is on the route to Lhasa, so I thought that I could just change the destination on my ticket. But no, they wouldn't let me. I had to cancel my Lhasa ticket and then buy a Shinning ticket. So, when I came to buy the Shinning ticket, they've told me that there are no sleepers left. There are only hard seats. Um, so that's a nice, comfortable journey to look forward to tonight. I'm in the waiting room, waiting for my train to Shinny, which is the same train to Lhasa, and I've met... The train is from And she's going to Lhasa with her father. And they're very lucky because they're, they're able to go to Tibet and I may be able to join them in a few days time with a bit of luck. T27-2008 train to Lhasa is just departing, of course I'm not going to Lhasa, I'm going to Shin and I'm in my hard seat with, um, it's absolutely jam packed and I'll show you around the train. So, I don't know why it's packed. I don't know why all these people are standing up, but whether they'll find seats eventually, I don't know, but it's looking quite chaotic. <laughs> My ride to is only for 19 hours, so I'm sure I can stand this discomfort for 19 hours. I've done worse. Um, 36 hours on a train in India was a lot worse than this. And the 67 hours in Mongolia from Olgi to Ulaanbaatar will never be beaten. So this is going to be our there seems to be some dispute over seats. These blokes have turned up claiming these seats to be theirs and all their luggage. And they've kicked these, some of these ladies out of their seats. So I have no idea what's going on. But nobody's challenged me for my seat yet. So yeah, the train ride was really, really uncomfortable. That wasn't pleasant at all last night um, and this morning, but survived 19 hours. Um, still haven't, just still hasn't dented my enthusiasm for getting down to Tibet. Um, that's still the plan. 
Um, so the latest is we've arrived in Xining, which is in the uh, central part of China, right on the uh, northern edge of the Tibetan plateau. So we're about 24 hours train ride from uh, Tibet here. Um, the situation today is that we still can't get a permit, so that's really disappointing. Um, we're going to wait here for a few days, uh, see what happens. I'm meeting Michelle tomorrow, she's arriving by plane from Shanghai, uh, so at least I'll have some company then. Um, Xining, as you can see, is a really huge, huge city, um, surrounded by mountains. Um, uh, but anyway, that's the uh, magical mystery spin on tour. Um, see what happens next. I booked the um, Tibet trip with a company called Snow Lion Tours and they have an office here in Xining. So I've come to find the office um, and I'm in this um, big building in the centre of town trying to find it. Um, I'm going to meet the man I've been emailing for the last two or three months and ask him about the uh, latest permit situation and see what we can do. I found it just come out of the office um, I filmed part of that conversation but such was the sensitive nature of um, conversations about Tibet border regulations that um, Wang Dun made me um, delete the film so um, it's not looking good um, still no permit today um, there's an outside outside slim chance that later on this afternoon we might know more Michelle has arrived, um, she arrived yesterday and we last, I met Michelle in, um, on the border between Argentina and Chile in Patagonia three years ago and I last saw Michelle, where was it? Navi Mag Ferry. Navi Mag Ferry. Yeah, she was boarding the ferry, north. Yeah, uh, we, we, we parted company but uh, we meet again in China. Right, the latest situation, we have got some good news. We had an email yesterday from Wang Dun saying the leader of the Tibetan Tourism Bureau has authorised our permits. So um, it looks like we're going to Lhasa. So we're really, really happy and we can't wait to get there. We're going to sort out the details of getting there today. And now this morning we're going to do some uh, Tai Chi. Some Tai Chi here in uh, Xining with uh, Lily one-fifth of the population at morning workout. <laughs> just come out of Wang Dun's office and here it is this is the permit for Tibet we've got one um, we're absolutely ecstatic and we can't wait to go um, I think I think coming down to the um, office in Shining and showing us space actually made the difference so um, we're going Friday see you there Friday the 20th of April 2012 and we're on the um, Shining to Lhasa train, 21 hours from Lhasa um, and we've got our permits, we're all set, we're on the train, we're really excited and we're in the restaurant car, we've just ordered dinner and we're going to have a beer and celebrate being on the world's highest railway. Um, We've already passed through some amazing, amazing landscapes and um, there's more of it to come. Um, tomorrow is going to be spectacular um, going across the Tibetan Plateau but this, um, this landscape is just incredible. What do you think of it so far Michelle? I think it's 
Denning. <laughs> Barren and gorgeous, dramatic landscape. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers Michelle. <laughs> So this is the second day of the train journey to Lhasa and we're on the Tibetan plateau and as you can see it's an absolutely spectacular place. Um, woke up this morning to um, beautiful clear skies and some amazing scenery, um, snow covered mountains, frozen rivers, lakes, yeah, it's just incredible. Um, we're at an altitude of about 4,500 metres here, um, but the highest altitude we've been is 5,065 metres, and there's oxygen being pumped into the carriages to uh, help prevent the uh, effects of altitude. So, um, what sites have we seen? Well, we passed through uh, many tiny villages, huge herds of yaks and sheep, um, we've passed the highest lake in the world, and um, yeah, it's just, it's just an amazing, amazing journey. Um, we're about three hours, I think, three hours away from Lhasa now, so uh, not far. From, uh, from reaching our uh, destination. So the next leg of our journey will be um, a tour along the Friendship Highway down to the border with Nepal. And we're going to take um, about six days on that. So that journey will be a separate um, diary entry. So um, for now, I'm going to finish this entry on the uh, Tibetan Plateau. So, um, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye!